How's it going guys? My name is Firefly and today I wanted to take a very close look at the brand new Tega 6455B that's coming to SnowRunner as a part of the Season 6 DLC, which takes place in Maine, USA. I specifically wanted to dive into this truck because I really think this truck belongs on the Calvary guys. I think this is probably the first new truck since the Zix 605R that will disrupt the meta in a big way. From what I can tell so far, far, this truck is top tier both on paper and in practice, and I can totally see this truck standing alongside the Zix, the Azov 73210, the original Tega, etc. as the elite part of my fleet that carries the team in the worst of times, and I'm going to talk about why. Before I begin, I'm just going to get language out of the way. For the rest of the video, I'm going to refer to the new Tega 6455B as the long Tega, and the old old Tega 6436 that we all know and love as the short Tega, and that's just because the full names are a little bit long and there's no good way to shorten them to easily distinguish between the two. So a number says more than a thousand words, and also I love Excel, so here we go again. This right here sums up all the important specs of the long Tega and compares it to these three other trucks. I think it has a lot in common with them. If you're not thinking this already, yes, all three of these trucks are very much meta. These are trucks that I and many other players I know actually use all the time, and primarily because of their performance, not just because they look or sound cool. So the Long Tega having a lot in common with them certainly speaks to its own value. I'm comparing the short Tega to the long Tega because it's structurally similar to the long Tega and has access to almost the exact same parts in the customization menu. I don't think the short Tega overlaps very much with the long Tega in terms of use cases, even though they look kind of similar and they are from the same in-game brand, but because most people consider the short Tega a top tier truck, I thought that putting them side by side might help to reveal why the long Tega is also top tier. The reason why the Voron D and the A7 are on this list is quite simple. They are the best trucks I know that can do the crane bed trailer combo, which is a rare and valuable feature feature that the Long Tega also has. So the Long Tega actually competes with them in that very crucial use case. Starting off with weight, we can see that the first three trucks are essentially in the same weight class. They also have access to the exact same engines, which gives all three of them an overall decent amount of power for their weight. The Long Tega is slightly worse because it's one ton heavier than the Short Tega and the Voron, but overall that one ton of extra weight doesn't wear it down too much, and all three of these trucks do still have plenty of power to spare. The A7 is in a completely different weight class from the first three. It's 18 tons, but it also has access to the most powerful engine set in the game. And for trucks that have access to these huge engines, 18 tons is actually very light, so its power to weight ratio is still very good. It's very difficult to stall the engine on the A7 because it's an incredibly powerful engine for that amount of weight. The the A7, however, cannot go very fast. It doesn't have access to the regular truck gearboxes like the other three. Instead, it has the special gearboxes, which makes it super fuel efficient, but also caps its speed. The other three do have access to the regular gearboxes, which allows them to reach much higher speeds when the road is easy enough to allow for it. And in between the three of them, the Tegas have a higher speed cap than the Voron, courtesy of the high range gearbox, which has more gear under auto, and most importantly, a way faster high gear. The Voron is stuck with the special off-road gearbox, which is basically a duplicate of the normal off-road gearbox that the two Tegas have, but it's the only option for the Voron. You cannot upgrade away from it. Now, you might ask, isn't the off-road gearbox better anyways? Well, you could argue that it's a matter of preference, but objectively speaking, I don't think so. I cover gearboxes in depth in my gears, gearboxes, and diff lock video. You can click the pop-up in the top right corner of the screen if you want to check that out. But in a nutshell, my stance is that the off-road gearbox is always best for trucks with engageable diff lock, and the high-range gearbox is always best for trucks with always-on diff lock. But even if you still want your off-road gearbox, you can put an off-road gearbox on either of the Tegas, but I can't put a high-range gearbox on my Voron, even though I badly want to. 
So it is still a limitation for the Voron that the Tegas don't have. So at this point, notice that out of the three trucks that can do the crane bed trailer combo, the long Tega is the only truck that has access to the high range gearbox. So it can drive much faster than the Voron or A7. Moving on to tires, the Tegas also have the upper hand here. They have access to the TMHS balloon mud tires. The short Tega actually has the biggest advantage because it has access to every type of tire that the other trucks have, and its wheels are a little bit bigger. The long Tega doesn't have OHD1 because it's incompatible with double back tires, but TMHS is what most people are going to be using anyways, and it puts the Tega heads and shoulders above the Voron D and A7 when it comes to mud and snow. I've compiled a little comparison of the different types of tires here, and as you can see, not only does TMHS have higher friction in mud and snow, but the wheels are also super wide, and they're super wide on all axles, not just the rear axles. Having good grip in both the front and back is quite valuable, especially on 6x6 trucks, which only has a single front axle that also sits quite far away from the back axles. The front axle is your steering axle so having good grip there will improve handling and turning radius. Having lots of grip on the front axle also massively improves performance in areas where the terrain alternates between materials or alternates in elevation because the front and back axles which are far apart can take turns doing most of the work. Moving on to the bit about handling, we immediately run into the main weakness of the long Tega which is the below average steering. I think the Long Tega has the worst steering out of the four. Its turning radius is probably worse than the Voron D, despite having better front tires and better weight balance because it's a little bit longer and has a fairly narrow maximum steering angle. The front wheels don't turn very far at all. The A7 actually has incredible steering even though it's super long and wide and that's because it has three steering axles instead of one. This is a very rare level of agility for its weight class and it's one of the reasons why it's so good. And the short Tega is of course one of the most agile trucks in the whole game because it's small and short and it has phenomenal steering. The front wheels turn very far and very fast fast too. Although it is worth remembering that even though the long Tega has the worst steering among these trucks, it's still only below average compared to the rest of the game, and it's not a critical weakness or handicap. Which is also why I used yellow instead of red here. There are no red boxes because these trucks have no major weaknesses, which is one of the reasons why they are top tier. The A7 used to have issues with his front bumper, but that's been mitigated in more than one way already. On the next line we have stability, and here the two Tegas and the A7 are all very stable and very balanced. The Voron D, however, is noticeably front heavy when running the loading crane, which you want to be running because the crane bed trailer combo is the main value proposition of this truck. The long Tega, however, is more stable and very balanced front to back, and it can also do the crane bed trailer combo. And if you look further down, it's also faster thanks to the high range gearbox and has better fuel capacity than the Voron D. So it really does chew into the Voron D's market share. I think overall the Voron D's seat on the Calvary is really being threatened by the Long Tega here. The main reason why the Voron D is top tier in my eyes is because it's the only medium sized truck that's very good all around and can do the crane bed trailer combo. It is still a decent truck for other setups, just not the best. For example, if you want the crane plus bed, but you don't need the trailer hitch, the Voron AE is literally equal or better in every way. And if you want to do crane plus semi-trailer, the Voron D is also okay, but the short Tega is phenomenal, etc, etc. But then the long Tega comes into town as a medium sized truck that's even better all around than the Voron D and it can still do the crane bed trailer combo. So yeah, I think once phase six actually comes out, I'm gonna start using the long Tega in place of the Voron D a lot. So the Voron D probably won't come out of the garage nearly as often as it used to and I'll probably be using the long Tega in place of the short Tega and the A7 as well. Just not as much. 
I think the Long Tega is still better at some things that I'm currently using those two for, but unlike the Voron D, they'll continue to be useful in ways that the Long Tega isn't. The Short Tega is still one of the best trucks for low saddle semi trailers, and a decent fast truck for a bed and no crane. And the A7 is always going to be useful for heavy loads, at least over these trucks. That being said, there are definitely situations where I need a small, fast truck like the Short Tega, but could also benefit from a crane bed trailer combo, as well as situations where I need a stable truck that can do the crane bed trailer like the A7, but I could benefit from being able to do that with a smaller truck. And the Long Tega is ready to take over those situations. So I hope this makes it sufficiently clear as to why the new Tega 6455B, aka the Long Tega, is a force to be reckoned with. It scores anywhere between above average to top tier in almost everything that determines how good a truck is, and it can fulfill one of the most high value use cases, which is the crane bed trailer combo. Comparing it to these other good trucks makes it quite clear as to why the Long Tega will be absolutely invaluable. While it isn't downright superior to the other trucks in this comparison, it does take their many strengths and few limitations and recombines them in a slightly different way that makes it better than them in many scenarios. Is it overpowered though and does it make SnowRunner pay to win? Hell no, especially considering that it's one of the hardest things to unlock in the game, because it's unlocked via a contract that's itself locked behind three other prerequisite contracts. I think if you were to make a beeline towards it, the time investment required would probably be equal if not higher than what it takes to get the 6605R. So yeah, I think the Long Tega is balanced considering the competition that already exists and the difficulty of unlocking it, but it is also incredibly valuable and useful. It's definitely one of several things that makes Phase 6 all the more exciting. If you watched this far into the video, know that I'm incredibly grateful. I hope you enjoyed the content or learned something useful. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button for this video. It's only one click for you, but will help me out tremendously. If there's anything you would like to tell me, don't hesitate to leave a comment. And if you would like to learn about the other changes coming with the Phase 6 update and the implications they might have on gameplay, you can check out my Phase 6 deep dive video, which again is in the top right corner corner of the screen. The rest of the video is just gameplay of me making use of the Long Tega on the PTS. The video has been mostly a spreadsheet up until this point, so feel free to stick around if you'd like to see the Long Tega in action. Thanks for watching guys, and I wish you all a fantastic day.